Hello, I'm Dan Keaton. I'm Director of Sales and Marketing for Convergent Design, but I'm also very technical. Today we're going to be talking about the Gemini, the Gemini 444. Gemini 444 is a full, uncompressed recorder. We like to think of it as a revolutionary recorder because it is very small in size. It is uh, 4.5 inches tall and 5.4 inches wide. It's about 1.1 inches thick. It weighs uh, about one pound. It's 1.05 pounds. The deal is that it'll allow you to take the output of any HDSDI camera, whether it's single link HDSDI, dual link HDSDI, or 3G HDSDI, and with our 3D option, it'll even allow you to in input two 3G HDSDIs. It has a world-class monitor. This monitor is utterly unique, at least in this uh, form size, in that the angle of the image is not important. There's no problem with the viewing angle. If you move it around, you can see it from every direction. There's no sweet spot in the middle, and which is most important when shooting. You don't have to constantly bob your head trying to find the, the real color. The colors, the colors do not change. This is an ultra-premium monitor, and that's included, and it's built in as part of our Gemini 444. What is the native resolution of the monitor? The native resolution is 800 by 480, and it's a 5.0 inch monitor. Uh, we pride ourselves on building very low power, very small size, very high technology devices. This draws 8 to 15 watts. It's a, an exceedingly bright monitor. It will work uh, in bright sunlight, and in fact, if you take your bright light and shine it on here, you may be able to still see uh, the image. Uh, the power consumption of our device is 8 to 15 watts. Typically it'll be 12, 12 watts while recording, but if you turn the brightness of the, of the monitor backlight all the way up, that'll draw 2.5 watts in itself. But that allows you the option of going out into the sun. This is a perfect uh, recorder uh, for any Steadicam operator. You can take uh, a Sony F35 and then use this and not have to shade the screen so you can see the framing uh, even out in the sun. We will build, be building a sun hood uh, but we won't we do not know whether it's going to be necessary or not. Powering is a via a four pin Hiroshi. We provide numerous cables. Uh, the cables that uh, work with the nano flash work with this uh, it comes with a uh, four-pin XLR for professional power to our four-pin Hiroshi. And the voltage input is somewhere around 5 to 19.5 volts. If you're using a Sony F3, uh, there's a battery that will plug in the back. and has a little connector that will uh, plug into both the nano flash and to the F3. Now, because... The camera draws 24 watts, and we draw typically 12 watts, so we're totaling about 36 watts. You know, you don't get hours of record time on this little battery that plugs into the back. If you use an Anton Bauer or IDX or other professional battery solution, you just use a DTAP cable, DTAP or PTAP. So any battery chemistry, and we'll also have an optional uh, accessory which will allow you to use 24 or 28 volt power. It is a world-class recorder. We're talking about full uncompressed. There is no other, no, there's no other recorder that records at a higher quality. There are other recorders that record at the same quality but nothing by any manufacturer records at higher quality. This is a full uncompressed recorder uh, we will put the internal files in a quick time wrapper and if one, one wants DPX files, we will be able to create those. It's uncompressed 10-bit 422, it's uncompressed 10-bit 444, 
chips. It's not a codec. It's uncompressed. It's full, full data. So there's no codec. There's no, there's no uh, loss in any way. It, it, it is quick time wrapped. You would take the SSD. This one happens to be uh, 256 gigabytes. An identical one in size would be 512 gigabytes. You take this and you put it into the transfer station that we supply as part of the product and then then you connect that to your computer via an eSATA 6.0 gigabits per second interface. Transferring footage, 30 minutes of footage here will transfer into uh, a reasonable computer with a reasonable disk subsystem in 10 minutes. Also, if you want a compressed workflow, you can take the footage and then use Apple Compressor or Adobe Media Encoder or other software and then 30 minutes of footage will take 15 minutes to encode to whatever codec that you wish. If you have a Panasonic camera and you want to shoot uh, for a Sony client, you want Sony XD Cam, but you have a Panasonic camera, you can do it. And that will be a first encode. It's, it's like it happened in the camera, because the camera takes the full uncompressed and then encodes it. But we're taking the full uncompressed as if it was in the camera and encoding it to whatever codec that you wish. There is no ProRes, yeah, and there's a reason for that. Remember, about 12 watts, it's 8 to 15 watts. Remember, about one pound, okay, and remember real small, no fans, no problems, no noise. If we add a general purpose computer in here so that we can encode it to all of these different codecs, then the power goes up. There are other recorders out there that are similar. Of course, they're much larger, they weigh much more, and then they draw maybe 10 times as much power. So, you take it to your, you're using our transfer station, and then you use uh, Apple Compressor or Adobe Media Encoder. Um, not, on, not only do we support Sony viewing LUTs, we support any viewing LUTs that you wish. Uh, later on, these will be user customizable and user loadable and user selectable. Uh, you have the option, let's say that you're recording from an F3 ca camera or an F35 or other professional camera that has Sony S-Log, you can record to one SSD and that could be native S-Log. You record to another one and we'll take the native S log but burn a LUT into it and record, record it with a burned in LUT to make it easy for post. So you could do two simultaneous records? Yes, and they can both be full uncompressed with native S log or uh, with no S log at all, or they could have burned in LUTs. And the same thing, same flexibility is available on the outputs. There are two outputs here. Single link, dual link, or two 3G outputs. For each and every output, you have a choice. What do I want to send out? Do I want to send out uh, 422? Do I want to send out 444? Of course, you know, so some cases are going to require a dual link. But also, you get a choice of whether uh, you want a viewing let. And if you want a viewing let applied, fine. One very practical application is if you're on a professional shoot and you're using Sony S-Log or Log C or other logs, uh, you may want to send to one monitor the, the native log footage so you can examine that very carefully. But for the client monitor, you send a view, the same signal with a viewing LUT applied so that you can look to see what you want to see but then you can see, uh, show the client with the normal viewing LED applied so you don't have to 
answer all the questions, why does it look so bad? The, uh, the typical way to get a, a viewing letter on here would be to load it in, because this transfer station is a two-way transfer station. You just load it into the card and then load it into here. An hour of footage, DPX footage, is a tremendous number of individual files. Instead of recording the, the video as individual files, we're recording the, yeah, that would be individual files per frame, we're recording it as a complete file here, and then we'll take the SSD, load it into the transfer station, and then use a utility that we provide, which will take frame by frame the footage, and then create the individual files on your computer. That way, we're not bound by a few hundred thousand files on our system, which would slow us down. But you get the few hundred thousand files on your computer. It takes every flavor, 720p, 23.976, 720p, 24, 25, 29.97, 30, 50, 59.94, and true 60. For 1080, it's the same. Now it goes 1080p 29.97, 1080p 24, 1080p 25, 1080p 50, 1080p 59.94, and 1080p 60. And of course, we also do 1080i uh, 50, 1080i 59.94, and 1080i 60. We definitely plan on supporting ARI RAW, but that requires cooperation between our company and ARI. We fully expect to do that. Uh, we, we have a mode uh, right now that will allow us to record uh, exactly what comes into this unit and then this is a different mode than normal but in this let's call it an in and out mode whatever comes in we record including stuff like closed captioning and every other bit of information that comes in and then you can play back that information and it'll come out 100% faithful to what came in. So if you want to use uh, any format whatsoever that's a legal format for us to receive, then we can record that in anywhere in the field and then we can play it back into your edit suite and you'll have exactly as if your camera was in the, in the edit suite. If it comes over the HDSCI, it is our goal to process that metadata properly. Also, on, on our screen, which is a touch-sensitive screen, you will have uh, positions where you'll be able to say, well, this is such and such a file number or such and such a f uh, scene and, and take. And you will have push buttons on here, which will allow you to say, well, increment the take number, increment the scene number. We've tried to price this uh, very fairly. It's $5,995 street price. The list price is $6,295. But again, street price is $59.95. That includes a case. It, inc it does not include any SSDs. It includes the power supply. includes the transfer station. Uh, it includes all the cables you need. But none of these. And the reason we don't include these is because some people will want one or two, others will want more, and some will want the 256 gigabyte variety, others will want the 512 gigabyte variety. The price of this is 250, this 256 gigabyte SSD, very high performance, is $749, the 512 version is $1,349. The 3D option, uh, which allows you to, to do 3D very effectively. Also, it allows you to record two independent cameras, provided all of these cameras are Genlock. So if you have two Genlock cameras and you want to record them with this, with our 3D option, it's 1995.